Hi everyone, my name is Ulysses and I'll be your host for this Ask Our Expert series about clocks and timing. Everyone of course knows what a clock is, but in this video, our expert introduces us to viewing clocks through the lens of precision timing applications. So without further ado, I'm excited to introduce Sieg Schmals, who will be our expert for this series and will help answer all of our clock and timing questions. Sieg is a technical staff engineer for Microchip's Timing and Communications Group and we're incredibly excited to gather his insights on this topic. So let's get started with our first question. Sieg, what is a clock and why do we need good clocks? Well, you know, that's actually a good question. Some people may think that's a silly question because of course we know what a clock is. It could be something like this that hangs on our wall and changes once every second, or it could be the watch that I wear on my wrist. But even though these are trivial examples, they drive home a certain point. In order for society to function, we need to know what time it is. Otherwise, how would I know when to get up to go to work in the morning? Or let's say that I wanted to go to a basketball game after work. How would I know when the game starts? And once I got there and the game started, how would I know when the first quarter ends? So as you can see, obviously, Clocks are very necessary for everyday life, but not all clocks are good enough for a specific use case. So a clock like this or my watch is probably good enough for me to know when I need to though, pick up someone from the airport, for example. But would I want to use this clock to time the 100 meter sprint at the Olympics? Or let's take high frequency stock trading, for example. In high frequency stock trading, millions of transactions occur every second. And these transactions need to be kept in order so that we know what happened first, what happened second, what happened third, and so forth. But again, millions of these can occur within a given second. So let's say all I have is this clock to record these transactions. And so for transaction number one, I would record what this clock is saying. For transaction number two, I would record what this clock is saying. For transaction number three, I'd record what this clock is saying, and so on and so forth. Now let's say I've had five million transactions in one second. Later in the day, when I need to compile these transactions and figure out what order they came in, would this clock be sufficient? Of course not. So let's move away from our common concept of a clock like this and talk about it more in electronic systems. To begin with, let's define a clock as a series of repeating periodic pulses. But simply knowing that a clock is a repeating series of pulses is not good enough to determine whether a clock is good enough for a specific use case. Electronic clocks are the heartbeat of systems worldwide. And unless they are very good, which we are going to get into defining, the systems may have problems or even fail, just like a human heartbeat. So a human heartbeat may beat something like boom, 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 boom. And it is regular, as long as it's regular, my heart is working fine and I'm probably gonna stay reasonably healthy. Now, what if my heart suddenly starts doing something like boom, ba-boom, boom, 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 or something like that? That is a condition that we call arrhythmia, and that can be very painful or even lead to death. Now, <laughs> seeing as how I enjoy not being in pain and uh, not, being in, not being dead, I, I, I have a really vested interest in having a regular heartbeat. Well, the same thing applies for systems around the world with their electronic heartbeat, their electronic clocks. If those clocks are not very regular, which we'll again get into further what that means later, then these systems can have problems or perhaps even fail. It is this heartbeat that we're going to explore in the next videos. Thank you, Sieg, for that overview of what makes a good clock. For the folks who want to learn more about clocks and timing, check out the links in the description of this video. 
And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be the first to know when we have more insights from our experts. We'll see you next time.